Uh, crude is really the uh, other big news flow of the day and of the week. Crude prices, Brent crude prices are now at the highest level since 16 months after the OPEC output cut uh, deal took place. Uh, Mark Keenan, Head of Commodities Research Asia at SockGen joins us now to talk about that. Mark, uh, good morning and thanks for joining us on CNBC TV 18. Your thoughts on how much higher Brent could head? I mean, it's been a 15% rally in the last two days. Do you see more coming on the upside? Well, it's been a, it's been a, it's a, it's a very serious, incredible deal that OPEC have finally uh, uh, managed to agree upon, and the market has very much embraced that, as you say, with a 15% move higher over the last uh, day and a half, two days or so. Um, what this means is that we now shift from a 40 to 50 dollar range that we've had this year into a 50 to 60 dollar range next year. So in Q1. Uh, the price for Brent, we expect to average around $52.5, roughly where we are uh, now, um, and up to $60 in Q4, leaving us with a $56, average, uh, $56 average price for the rest of the year. So it's going to be a steady increase in oil prices throughout 2017, in our view. No hopes of incremental news, Mark, that someone is cheating and uh, therefore uh, uh, the deal not quite being as bullish as it is currently perceived? That's a very good point. Um, in our view, no. We expect compliance to be high. Uh, certainly the brunt of the pledge cut uh, to be borne out by the Arab monarchy, Saudi, Qatar, Kuwait, the UAE. Um, we expect strong compliance there. It's in their every interest um, for higher prices. We expect Algeria to also uh, be very compliant. They've been a key uh, driver of this deal going forward. The other countries, uh, it's more interesting, but, uh, but really the compliance is in a way forced by the fact that many of these countries are already producing at record levels. Um, so the ability to cheat, per se, is, is limited. Venezuela, for example, we expect strong compliance there because output is declining anyway and they're maxed out. Um, with respect to Iran, um, they're, at, uh, they're at pretty much maximum levels. Anyway, they have a slight increase factored into their, uh, into their balances going forward, about 90,000 barrels a day. Um, and we expect, uh, we expect uh, the other countries, uh, because of where they are in terms of their output, limit, uh, output ceilings at the moment, to, uh, to, uh, to, to be compliant. So it's, it's, it's a good deal. Okay. Uh, Mark, good morning. You know, in late 2015, early 2016, uh, all I heard was how OPEC has lost the power, right? its pricing power. Uh, and now, you know, we're all talking about, uh, you know, the, the big surge because of uh, OPEC's move. Uh, uh, do you get a sense that this could be just a temporary move and uh, ultimately oil prices would again head back lower? No. Um, it's important. This deal is also very important because it has allayed many of those fears uh, that we've had over the last year and a half, two years to some degree. And OPEC is now very much back in the driving seat um, with respect to, uh, to, to regulating and, and getting involved in, uh, in, in, oil, in the oil price outlook. Um, so we see them, we see them back. They've, they've got a pretty disciplined timetable of meetings ahead this year. They've already set the May 25th six-month meeting um, uh, recently, so we're going to have another meeting there. Um, so I think that they're, they're back, and that tends to be the, uh, um, the view in the marketplace, and people have taken some comfort in that, and hence that has contributed to some of the price strength as well. All right, uh, we will leave it at that. Mark Keenan, thank you very much for joining us this morning with uh, so much clarity on what we can expect on the oil price front. Uh, very important for India, obviously.